the Boquists have a lot to feel good about. Yeah. This story, first thing I thought when I read it, heartwarming. Yeah, it is. I mean, brothers together, and, you know, we see this frequently across the NHL and through the years. Um, it feels to me, just anecdotally, like it's becoming more and more frequent. Uh, but, you know, but two brothers playing in the same organization, uh, pretty spectacular. And uh, two, you know, this is, we talked about this before we came on air today, Tony. You know, these are the challenges that great teams face. You know, you're trying to keep that window open wide uh, in, a, in a cap environment. Uh, you've got that external pressure pushing hard on, you know, your ability to uh, keep a roster together year in, year out. Um, you look outside for alternatives to players that have gone on. It, it, talking specifically about these Florida Panthers, now that you lose a Brandon Montour through unrestricted free agency, um, it's, you know, what is what is plan B? How do you fashion together a decor, uh, not from scratch, but how do you supplement that decor in a way that allows you to get past the subtraction that is Brandon Montour? At Cup Final Media Day, Paul Maurice was so clear in saying that Bill Zito gave him a much better team this year. It doesn't often happen that a team loses the cup final, comes back the next year with more talent. It just doesn't. And yet, this is a tribute to Bill Zito. It's not about sentimentality when he puts together the Boquist. This is about <clears throat> putting together a back end that will be able to hopefully skate in the footsteps of the group that helped them win their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. As you look at the additions yeah. and the subtractions, what's your biggest takeaway when you first look at Focusing it? on the decor, you, you look at two guys on the subtractions column, look, go four, four notches down, Oliver Ekman Larson, and right before that, Brandon Montour. Those are two impactful defenders for these Florida Panthers. Oh, yes. Instrumental. Um, here's the interesting thing. I think going forward, um, you know, on the additions board, you've got a Nate Schmidt, who I've long been a fan of. I think he's just a fabulous defender. And, uh, again, a guy you would covet just in terms of his contribution, character and chemistry inside the room. Uh, but Nate Schmidt will make an impact there and goes a long way towards uh, diminishing the subtraction of an OEL, of a Brandon Montour. Um, Nate Schmidt is a guy that's probably going to factor in as a five or a six for this group depends on how they kind of uh, structure the roster. But the second point in all that, here's another luxury that the players have kind of given their general manager in this respect. Gustav Forsling and Miko, Miko Mikola really throughout the regular season, you see their game progress. But in the postseason, this is where it really came true. There were moments in the postseason you could fashion an argument for Gustav Forsling as the, the, the Conn Smythe Trophy winner. Just... Mm. The contribution he made to his group, the way he stepped up, and, and the dis and the distinction from you know other earlier parts of his career, how he had really kind of risen to the occasion. Point I'm making is, um, yes, you hate to lose a Brandon Montour, but adding you know adding in the value that now Mikola and Forsling are contributing on a nightly basis, adding in a Nate Schmidt, you've gone a long ways. If you're Bill Zito, you've gone a long ways uh, just in terms of addressing that void left by a Montour. And there's a natural parallel. The guy who was quarterbacking the power play when it mattered most in Game 7, OEL, bought out by the Vancouver Canucks. What a difference a year makes. And in the case of Nate Schmidt, bought out by Winnipeg. Right, right. This is a young man who we saw with the Vegas Golden Knights in a cup final, playing with tremendous emotion and heart and determination for him to join a team that has the kind of culture this one has, is a statement. Do they need to add more, or are you comfortable with what it looks like right now? You know, I, I really do think if there's another number for a, a top four transaction out there, and it's it's difficult to say that, you know, if it hasn't kind of broken loose by this point, um, odds are unlikely that it will. It leaves you looking forward to the trade deadline for these Florida Panthers, and by then you've got a long look at how is how has this decor I've assembled um, performed over the course of the year. That may be an area they want to address, but I do see really solid depth depth there, um, the, the kind of a group that is going to defend exceptionally well for these group, for a team that plays really solid structure, just top to bottom. Um, 
and, and does, again, the decor have some, some offensive upside. So there's, I, I, I'm content to kind of look at this group, see how they perform over the course of the year. Um, come deadline time, you might uh, identify there's a need there. Hard to say. Tremendous momentum. President's Trophy, Cup Final, winning the Cup. That's their last three seasons. Wow.